Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Carlos Mejia, and I'm the director of the first ever annual ASF Film Festival. We are so excited to have you here today, as we will be showing films from ASF Mexico City and ASF Guadalajara, upper school students. The films will, will range from five to seven minutes, and we will have a selection of 12 films for you all. We are so excited to have you here today. We hope you enjoy. Before we begin, I would like to thank our sponsors Moshi Moshi, Starbucks, and Corolla Bakery for making this festival a reality. Thank you so much for your support in this project. Over the next three days, the judges will be deciding three filmmakers who will receive awards. First place, second place, and third place. We will be communicating this all with you through social media. Please be on the lookout for that. One more thing, guys. We would like to ask you all to please vote for your favorite film of the night. If you would scan this QR code, it will take you to a form in which you can vote for your favorite film tonight. Uh, the winner will be given a People's Choice Award trophy. I'm so excited for that. Thank you all so much. Mary Lotus Lewis, called Maria by her mother's Mexican side of the family, was a rather nervous individual. Nervous, unsociable, and as the nearing town of Fordwich labelled her, undying. Undying because no one person really knew how old she was, what year she was born in, or even how long she had been in the town. Some of the local children believed her to be a ghost, so they would pour liquid detergent around her house, thinking that they would be able to clean it and rid themselves of her lurking presence, they would say. A hermit, most thought her to be, and she didn't mind agreeing with them and fully accepting her dislike for leaving with the comfort of her own house. Mary Lotus Lewis, herself had lost track of her age because of her forgetful nature. She herself would oftentimes forget doctor appointments, expiration dates of her groceries, and even sometimes she would forget to lock her own doors. Oh yes, and Mary Lotus Lewis had cats. Five cats, in fact. Now being shown is Jean-Philippe Ramieu. Although she never listened to music anymore, after attending a concert at a young age, she quite enjoyed the oddness of the wannabe piano, also known as the harpsichord, and out of pity for the strange instrument, she named a cat after a famous harpsichord player. After giving the Persian cat the name, personality began to change or mature even to a poised house pet. Now approaching the frame, quite slowly in fact, is August Zeng. August Zeng was found on the street without a tail, and because Jean-Philippe Ramieu was becoming so independent, she took the stray. That's when she came up with the name, consumed once every month, the chocolate croissant with lines of malted cocoa across its surface was Mary Lotus Lewis' biggest pleasure. She enjoyed the treat so profusely, she went to the nearest public library and researched the inventor of the dessert. August Zeng was the name that appeared. It fit because of the cat's brown fur and striped skin. She isn't sure if Zeng is aware of his lack of tail, so don't tell him. Conjunctivitis the cat, shortened sometimes to conjun, was named after the pink eye infection, well, because of her red eyes. Mary once had contracted this infection, but had, unlike others, only suffered from it from exactly two hours. A miracle it was, so in honour of it, she decided to name her red-eyed cat after it. She later wondered if naming her, the cat after an eye disease caused her cat to be constantly falling over and tripping on the rug. 59% of cats are obese. And unfortunately, one of Mary's cats suffered from this condition. The average weight of a British short hair was 3 to 7 kilograms, but Zoratus weighed a whooping 18 kilograms. Zoratus is the cat's name, in case you didn't catch that. He was named after the inventor of Depotalide, which was the treatment of obesity in dogs and cats. Lazy and only compliant with the promise of food, Zoratus was the most spoiled cat out of the five. Judy Collins the cat was named after the American singer because of her strikingly blue eyes. She was the oldest of all the cats, and Mary herself didn't even remember how old she was when she had caught in her and how close she was to death, so she was slow, patient, and gentle when feeding and caring for her. At first glance, the morning was no different to the others. Cold and probably spoiled milk was fed to the old cats, but it wasn't like other mornings. This morning was different. What was different? 
Jean-Philippe Remieux was there, and so were August Zeng, Zoetis, and Judy Collins. Then what was different? Wait, thought Mary, looking around the room and turning the door. The door she had thought she had shut and locked overnight was in fact open wide. She had forgotten about it. And at that moment, she suddenly realized Conjun wasn't there. Mary Lotus Lewis, in the frame for you, is ten years old. Her hair wasn't white and lumpy. Back then it was a brilliant yellow, which her mother would braid. And because her mother is living and well at this time, let's call Mary by her other name, Maria. Maria Lotus Lewis was the kindest child, kind, curious and caring. Her neighbouring community labelled her as the sunshine. She had three cats at the time. Even as an old woman, she kept portraits of them in her home. The black cat was called Salem after her favourite cartoon's black cat. Not many kids her age were allowed to watch it, so when she told her very best friends Elise and Gabriella, the two ooed at Maria's cultured self. The second cat, white and thin, was named White Filet, named after her late father's favourite dish his mother would cook him. Maria barely ever hugged the cat because when she did, she would begin to cry. Blindingly yellow, Huang Su was named after her Chinese pen pal's favourite colour. They only got to write around five letters in total because the post was increased. Maria never got to tell Yu in her situation, she said she would never smile again when she stopped writing. Anyways, maybe it ran in the family, but her mother too was quite forgetful. She would forget to take down her Christmas decorations and pick Maria from Gabriella and Lisa's house after playdates. She would even forget to lock the cat door sometimes. So one morning, Maria awoke as always and went to the kitchen, ready to feed the cats, of course. Except she only saw two Huagse and White Filet sat on the carpet, and blinking as they stared at one another, then at Maria. That's when she noticed the cat door was open. And although she didn't have a favourite cat, Salem was her favourite cat. Rather than waste time, Maria immediately grabbed her boots, squishing her feet into them, and she snatched a raincoat from the hanger and stood at the door, bracing herself with the cold. And rushing out of the house and making sure to close the door behind her, she wandered and ran through the streets until she finally spotted Salem's tail. She called for the cat, chasing Salem around the streets and alleys until finally the cat stopped and turned. It wasn't that she disliked the outside as previously mentioned, she was just scared. But did she need to be? Had Mary wasted all of her kindness and youth for fear? Yes, she had, Mary thought to herself, staring out the window. But fear is something that can't be monitored. Fear was and is a disease, a sickness worse than her now gone mother and worse than a conjunctivitis infection. Fear clung to her tired knees and hardly opening door. It crunched her up into comfort and lack of life. It infested her mind and was currently risking her cat's safety. She was scared. She was scared until she remembered what real fear was. She was until she wasn't.
Where do we live? Is it true that we live in a society? That I do not know. But we do indeed live in Mexico City. A city unlike any other. Something special around this place. You feel it when you walk around. I can't describe it. It's a sensation. This emotion that surrounds every and each person. It surrounds you when you walk through the city. It's the looks you get. It's the feeling of something special. You know, there's no place like Mexico City. And I don't know why. There's a whole lot of people here. Too many people. We live in close proximity to one another. The poor, the rich. Different races, different ages. Everyone coexists. There's a certain order in the city. As the buses blare in traffic, you feel it there too. There's no way to escape it, it's all around us. Mexico City is a wonderful, beautiful, different, incredible, magical place. And everybody that comes here knows it. Some like it, some don't. I live for it. This city was hit by the pandemic, like most others, and it responded maybe the same, maybe differently than in all other cities. It's a crazy place to see so many people standing next to each other, masks on, getting ready to get on a crammed bus to then take another cramped bus, to take a cramped metro, to take a cramped bus, to take a taxi home. The fear that surrounds us, maybe misguided, maybe not. Does it come from COVID? Does it come from ourselves? We are as ignorant about ourselves as we are about the situation around us. Mexico City exists in a vacuum. And yet, every change that happens around the world can be seen reflected here, as we sink into the ground with the Aztec temples. Do we sink deeper into our reality or further from it? The Mexican identity will make sure a mixture of things everybody considers bad, the conquistador spirit, the takeover land spirit, the Indian spirit, the traditional Mexican spirit, the Aztec spirit of fighters that won every war except the one that mattered. This situation reminds me of a book, El Amor en Tiempos de Cole. If we seek to search for identity in a city, we must try to understand it and everything around it, and yet we cannot, because we know nothing. COVID has turned us, has punished us, for our sins, for all that we try to do. For this identity that we call Mexican, we must push past it. We must look at the beauty in everyday items, of the graffiti on the walls, of the street sellers, of the music blaring, of the noise of the trucks, of the cramped metro. We must love ourselves and thus our city in order to understand it. And once we do, then we can forget it. And we can grow further, faster, stronger. But how much better does it get than here? This is the most beautiful place in the world. It's insufferably loud, ain't it? And it's not just the sounds, the lights, the images. The motion, the emotion, it's all too much to bear. But at the same time, it's just so damn quiet and so damn loud. <sighs> Listen to the sounds. Do you fear them? Is it the quiet that you fear? Being in such a city can make us crazy. Or are we crazy to not be in the city? Such an amazing place, is it just to leave it? We're born here, are we from here? A city and a state named after a goddamn country. Imagine that. The dogs never stop barking. 
the engines never stop running. The lights never turn off. In a thousand million years, maybe someone will wonder where that noise is coming from. It's not my fault, is it? I didn't choose to be born here. I am a product of my city, my environment. I behave the way I do because that's the way that we behave. The virus has stopped that. Why is the virus in my city? We're told that it could come here. Does it need an invitation? I didn't ask to be born here. It's all so loud, and yet so quiet. Listen, listen, but not too hard. Because if you listen too hard, you'll get lost. There's too much mystery around us. We must ignore it, or learn to accept it. Take a deep breath. Look around. What do you see? People standing, drinking, watching, talking, working. You're just another one of them. Most days, it seems, not even a concrete is dead. Everything is alive. It moves. It talks. It lives the life of the city. Until we learn to understand and accept that we are nothing but the city. Isn't it crazy that you can feel each sound? Each sound an individual. Living. Living their own lives. Each as complex as yours. Isn't it crazy that every person you see on the streets lives, works, loves, laughs, and yet they seem so insignificant? So many people, such little space, such complexity, such beauty. That is Mexico City. Every sound a decision, every instant important, every person exists, and we must learn. We must not forget them.
How long has this patient been waiting? The patient appears to be unresponsive. He had no reaction when the light was shown into his eye. His eye seemed blank and empty. Similarly, I, his breathing felt weak and pained, and I wasn't able to feel a very strong pulse in my beginning examination. I see. How long do you think he has? to be an expert to know our air quality is bad right now. A quick peek outside shows gray, hazy skies, not to mention tiny pieces of ash swirling all around us. Of course we're concerned about the air because these particulars you breathe in. Doctors will tell you now is the time to stay indoors as much as possible.
I hope you are enjoying the films that we have seen so far. I would like to take the time to thank those who sponsored us on GoFundMe. Thank you for your contribution to making this event a reality and helping us showcase film at ASF. Me llamaron de la escuela diciendo que tus calificaciones están bajísimas. Peor aún, no te has presentado en dos semanas. Están a punto de correrte. Hoy la escuela. Ayer te peleaste con tu hermano. La semana pasada te rogimos por rayos del hospital. Carajo, qué sorpresa me espera mañana. Estoy harto que siempre estén encima de mí. ¡Harto! ¿Cómo quieres que nos demos encima de ti si te comportas como un imbécil? ¿Imbécil? ¿Le dices imbécil a alguien que te ha aguantado todos los días por toda su vida? ¿Qué idioteces dices? Si le das lo fácil que es la vida para ti, y aún así te quejas de nosotros, eres una desgracia. ¿Qué vas a hacer en tu vida? ¿De qué te sirve existir? Lo único que nos demuestras es que nos nació un niño inútil. Ya no eres un niño chiquito. ¡Madura! Dices que muy listo y preparado, pero no haces ni madres. Va a ser un fracaso, no das una. Nos ahorrarías muchos problemas si no estuvieras con nosotros. Lo mejor no hubieras nacido. ¿Cómo quieres que no estemos encima de ti si te comportas como un imbécil? ¿No será que no soy tan imbécil como crees? Mírate, no das una. ¿Y a mi edad? ¿Tú cuántas dabas? ¿Cuándo vas a madurar? ¿Tú cuándo vas a madurar como papá? ¿De qué te sirve existir? Existo más de lo que tú exististe a mi edad. Existo porque digo lo que quiero decir. Existo porque a diferencia de ti, papá, te digo las cosas sin miedo. Existo porque tengo la libertad que tú nunca tuviste. Ya no voy. Pienso a tu hermana, por favor. ¿Me das con la tarea? Ahorita no, estoy jugando. Le voy a marcar a la papá y dile que no me quiere. ¡La salte!
하나 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 빨리 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 눈 꺼도 미안 많아 이 상태 빨리 빨리 Ana, 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 por favor, Ana, 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 contesta, Ana. ¿Ves todo lo que tuvimos que hacer para que dejaras de jugar? ¿Qué chingados te pasa? ¿Está todo este idiotez? ¿Neta? Perdón. Sé que te había pasado algo. A ver, ya, 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 ya. Su mamá ya está ahí abajo y hay que limpiar este cochinero. Rápido. En serio, me asustaron. Se pasaron con todo eso de las huellas, la vecina. ¿Cuál vecina? ¿La vecina la que gritó?
Can, can anybody hear me? Someone? What do you want? I just want to know how I got here, and where I am. Don't worry. You will end up finding out. What? It does seem like you don't know what is going on. I really don't. I was on the desk and then I was here. Look around. Look at all of us. I was the first one. The first what? The first scrapped idea. Ideas of, of what? What's wrong with them? Keep it down. They all have potential. They are all like us two. We all got left down here. Deformed, neglected, rejected, forgotten. I was just... Just because you have a red mark doesn't mean you are better than any of us. I've seen many more with marks like that. They are still down here, somewhere. I never said anything about being some kind of chosen one. I, I was just wondering, why does everyone end up here? Because he doesn't realize that there is no idea so bad that there isn't something good in it. Him? Who, who is him? Stay quiet. my life and tried to do me wrong. Good luck. I... I survived? Probably not for long. You'll be gone in the next round. How do you know that? Well, look around. There's only a few of us left here now. Do you have any idea where he takes us? Nope. All I know is that you're not coming back. How do you know that? Because none of the others have. As they say, Life is a one-way street, and there is no way to come back. I was one of the first to be thrown out. I've seen many people suffer the same fate. They're all gone now. Gone! 
Well, now that's just very lazy writing. He's looking at you, kid. Say la vie! Here we go.
I would now like to express some gratitude for those who supported this project in its entirety. Thank you so much ASF who backed us up in this project. Thank you so much to the Director and Office of Communication, including Mr. Alvar Martinez, who is currently live streaming this, the PA, including Ms. Pali and Ms. Marce, the Film Club, including Mr. Manuel Ponce and Mr. Eduardo Garcia, Mr. Rodrigo Priego, Mr. Uh, Alexis Friedman, Mr. Germán Pérez Duarte, our editor, Mr. Diego Franco, another producer of this, and a very, very, very special thank you to Ms. Jennifer Burns for all the time and unlimited support she has given to this project. Thank you all so very much for allowing this to become a reality. It means the world to me and to future filmmakers. We would also like to thank the filmmakers for the time, effort, and talent they put into their films. We hope to see you all next year at the ASF Film Festival 2021.